Hi, this is Pratsky, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the board game myth. And I did a poll recently about what are some of the topics and, and concepts in this game that people would like to know more about. And the overwhelming topic is character progression and what does that actually look like and how does it work? And so I have tried to take all of my knowledge and I've dug through more of the rule book and whatever I could find to try to just make this concept more clear. So this is the first video and potentially a series of videos that I might do talking about some of these concepts and how we can help to clarify how this game actually works and try to um, just bring the community together and get people excited about this game because it really is an amazing game. This is one of my favorites by far. Um, but before getting into that, I will just throw out the, I don't know if disclaimer is the right word or not, but the truth of the matter is with Myth, it's gone through two different Kickstarter campaigns and overall the game isn't in the greatest of shape in terms of what all has been released for it, how it's been released, there's still another wave coming of miniatures um, from the second Kickstarter that has to be fulfilled and um, it like most likely won't be until next summer until we get that. There's also just a lot of different parts and pieces to the game that not everybody has because they weren't able to get it because it was either a, a stretch goal or something extra that you had to buy in the campaign or it was actually a something that came from a different Kickstarter for a different game. And it's just, it hasn't been assembled very well and people have hugely varying amounts of different pieces and parts and components to this game. And so that's unfortunate, but uh, Ulysses US is going to own this game. And I believe that all the legal stuff is now done. We're waiting on an announcement from them about more details on where they're gonna take this and what's coming. So I'm excited for that. Um, but even in this current state, it's still playable. It's still a ton of fun. And so with that said, just know that it should be getting better. Um, but yeah, so for those of you that do have it, uh, or for those of you that are interested in potentially seeing this game uh, when it maybe is re-released, uh, let's, let's take a look at this concept of what it means to level up in this game. Hero progression in myth isn't the clearest concept to understand. That's why I'm doing this video. It's not uh, something, you, you don't earn XP in this game. You don't progress through levels like your level one, your level two, level three, and so on. It's more about how many titles that you've earned and thus how many green or better pieces of armor or gear that your character has been able to keep and how many upgraded cards that you have in your deck. I should add, what is a title? This was something that I was confused about, so I, I can't believe I almost forgot to add this in here, but a title is basically like, oh, Pratsky, the, well, here we go. Here's an actual title, The Harbinger. So Pratsky, The Harbinger. It's like, like you know, a title, like you're the champion or whatever, just, you know, something like that. It's, it's a way to say you, you've earned this, you've done something, you know, we could call you this, you know, The Harbinger or the life bringer. And there's a whole host of other titles and stuff that you earn. But, but that's what they are. It's kind of like a, a trophy in a sense. And each one of these has a unique special ability that it grants you. And as you start to earn more and more of these, you don't, you don't necessarily get to use each one of the special abilities that it comes with. Before you go out, when you do your act or whatever, you have to decide based on maybe what you see, what you, what you foresee coming up and what you need to fight and what it might look like, you get to choose one of them. Um, this doesn't affect how many pieces of gear that you get to keep. This is just which special ability are you going to use out of your pool of potential special abilities that you have on this next series of adventures or this module that you're gonna go off and do. So that is titles. But I wanted to make sure that that was clear because when I first was reading through the rule book and saw like, you, you know, you earn this title and you get to keep a piece of gear for every title that you have, I thought, title? What is that? Because the, the rule book didn't really do a great job of describing what titles were. 
So anyway, that is titles. At this time in myth, there's only one level that you can upgrade to, and that's Journeyman. And it's achieved by earning two titles, and thus having two pieces of green or better armor on your character, and it's earned by having three upgraded cards in your deck. There are levels beyond Journeyman, which are Master and Legend, which I don't know if you've seen the, the skull rating that they have on different modules and bosses, but they have a one skull, two skull, three skull, four skull. And the one skull is the out of the box hero. Two skulls is journeyman. Three skulls master, four skulls legend. We currently don't have a way to get to master or legend. We're kind of stuck until more of the game is produced and, and allows us to get there. And with Ulysses US now owning it, we're really hoping that they're gonna progress and get us a way to continue to upgrade these characters. Though we can't currently upgrade to Master or Legend, there actually is content that is appropriate for those higher levels. There are four different modules that have been released that are beyond two skulls. I think there's a two and a half and maybe a three skull or two and a, and a four skull. And there are also bosses and, and mini bosses that are beyond two skulls as well. So I haven't actually played any of that content yet, so I'm curious to know if some of that stuff is doable by upgrading your character enough through all the journeyman stuff to be able to try to see if it's doable. It's either going to be impossible or it's gonna be potentially quite a stretch to do it and quite a challenge. And uh, if any of you have actually tried to get that far and have had an experience on anything beyond Two Skulls, I'd be very interested to hear what your experience has been like in that so far. So leave a comment and let us know. Now getting back to the basics a little bit, every out-of-the-box hero comes with 25 cards. They're the ones with the little white flame on the top, and that's your starting deck. There are also five novice cards, and these are the cards that you can upgrade to before you reach Journeyman. And these have a little green flame at the top. And when you're instructed to modify your hero deck, you are manipulate, I think is the actual terminology, you are able then to take one of those novice cards, the green flame, and swap that card out with one of the white original cards from your deck. So your deck will actually never have more than 25 cards in it. You'll just continue to start to swap out the upgraded cards with the original cards. And this is actually quite interesting because you're not, you're not adding to it. You have to choose what you want to become a part of that new deck, but also choose what you don't want to be a part of that. And there's some interesting strategies that can come out of those decisions. When your hero meets the requirements to upgrade to Journeyman, which again is having earned two titles, having two green or better pieces of gear, and having upgraded your deck with at least three of the novice cards, which are the green flame cards, you're then eligible to select a subclass for your hero. Now the original five heroes have two different options for subclasses, and that would be the Acolyte, Apprentice, Archer, Brigand, and the Soldier. All of the other heroes just have one choice. And every subclass has 10 different cards that have the little blue flame on top of them. And when you are instructed to manipulate your hero deck, you can now select from that, those 10 cards and start swapping out those blue cards, which those ones, of course, are more powerful yet even than the green cards. Even though at this point you've upgraded your hero to Journeyman, there's still quite a lengthy process to upgrading them to achieve the full potential of what Journeyman has to offer. When you start the game with your 25 original cards and just your starting gear, you know, you're about as weak as you can be for that class. But as you continue upgrading those cards, you get some green cards in your deck, then you get some blue cards in your deck, you start upgrading your gear one piece at a time, you get some better stuff here, better stuff there, you start to swap out more and more and more of your white cards with blue cards, your power will just slowly creep up and your deck will become more and more effective. So you really have to look at it like a spectrum, really. It's not just you get to the next level and boom, you've got all the abilities with that level. Once you hit Journeyman, you're really barely any different than you were just previously. The only thing that really changes at that point is that you swap out your little character tile 
and uh, which gives you some more dice, but you still have a lot of work to do. You got to keep farming for better gear. You got to earn more titles so that you can keep more gear and just try to kind of slowly become more and more powerful. So a brand new fresh journeyman hero is going to be far weaker than a well seasoned and experienced journeyman hero. So now that I've hopefully laid a little bit of a foundation as to how to understand how leveling works a little bit and what it actually means, let's talk about how you actually get there. There are two primary ways to play myth where your hero will be progressing, and that is through adventuring and through playing through the modules. There's a couple other modes, there's tavern mode and slaughter field, but those do not uh, involve character pro progression, so we won't talk about those here. Um, and in fact, there's probably a lot to be said about what it actually means and how it actually looks to go adventuring versus playing through the modules. We'll save that for another video because there's, I mean, there's a lot of content there to cover. In this video, we'll just kind of be talking about what these two things are just in, in general. So the most efficient way to progress your hero is through playing the modules. The modules will all give you a title if you're able to complete them successfully. So it's a guaranteed title for each module. And they also have ways as you progress through each module to upgrade your hero deck as well. So that's gonna be your best bet for getting there. Now, in terms of these titles and having these, as was mentioned before, the only way that you can keep gear other than your starting gear is by owning these titles. You have one title you get to keep one other piece of gear now that's really important because if you start the game with fresh heroes you go out adventuring you earn some pretty awesome gear and then you decide okay we're gonna be we're gonna be done for the day when you stop you won't be able to keep any of that gear that you just earned so it really is best to start at least by playing through one module so you can at least at the end of that keep one piece of gear uh, but I would definitely keep going if, if I were you because it kind of hurts to earn some pretty awesome gear and then have to just leave it all behind once you're done with it. There is another way to earn titles outside of the modules and that is through boss hunting. Now this is something that I actually haven't done yet. Uh, you, you, I mean it's, it's kind of a process. You have to go out and you have to capture somebody, interrogate them, and then potentially fight this boss. And I'll show you here, but there's a table in the rule book that shows you which boss that you fight, if you successfully defeat them, what it will reward you with in terms of titles. So again, this is something that I haven't done yet, but I know that this is another avenue to earn titles. Now, I don't believe that there's any way besides through boss hunting that you can earn titles through adventuring and adventuring sends you out and you're exploring all these different tiles. It's kind of open-ended, but with each tile, there's a, if, if it has the, the right icon on it, you will have to draw a quest card. And there are a lot of different quest cards in this game and they will reward you with different things if you complete them. Uh, but titles is, is not one of them. But some of them do have the ability to earn upgraded cards to manipulate your deck and others have the ability to get better tokens in your token bag. So the token bag, this is something that I haven't talked about yet. And this is another important part to leveling up because this helps you farm for better gear. And uh, when you start, you will have, I think it's 30 white tokens and 15 green tokens. And when you are instructed to, um, you know, pick up some, some, some loot, like a treasure. There's different ways to do that. I won't go into that here. You'll actually draw into this bag and you'll pull out a token. And depending on what color it is, will depend on what gear deck that you draw from. And then you put that token back into the bag and give it a shake. And if you draw a white token, you draw from the white deck. And really all that's gonna give you is a potential for some potions uh, or some coins or something like that. Uh, no, I don't think there's any gear in that deck at all. Green will give you green gear, blue, blue gear, and so on. And to, to once you get those titles and you can actually start keeping gear, you're going to want to try to continually upgrade and get the best gear that you can find for your character. 
and that's going to be a really good way to do it. So those quest cards will definitely give you a lot of opportunity to continue to upgrade that token bag of yours. And that's something that'll stick around for your party that you should jot down between sessions is what number of tokens are in this bag. Because some of the rewards will actually tell you to remove a white token uh, or add a blue token or add a, a gold token perhaps. So that's, uh, that's definitely an important piece to it. And it's through that the questing that I think provides the greatest chance of the ma manipulation of your token bag, as well as some opportunities to upgrade your deck. Now, I think it's, I think there's few enough opportunities in there to upgrade your deck where you might even take a few hour session in an evening and do as many quests as you can and possibly not encounter a card that allows you to manip manipulate your deck. So again, I, I do believe that running through the modules is the best way to upgrade your deck and of course at the end get those tiles. So I'll do a little recap. Hopefully put this in maybe a different way, maybe make it a little bit more digestible if hopefully what I've talked about here has made any sense. I hope so. But you will start the game with a hero of your choice and you will have 25 out of the box cards for that hero all the ones with the white flame on there. You're gonna enter into the game, you're gonna go adventuring, you're gonna go do some modules. Once you do your first module, so I'll even say in the Stone of Life, you will have an opportunity to upgrade a card in your deck as you're working your way through that, so, which will bring one of the green cards into your deck. Uh, and then once you complete that module, you will get a title. And with that title, it will give you a special ability that you can use, and it will also provide you the ability to keep one piece of non-starter gear. That's a start. Then at that point, you can go out adventuring, maybe try to upgrade that one piece of gear that you've got to something better, or you can go and do another module, in which case you'll be able to probably upgrade another card, you'll get another title, so now you'll be able to keep two pieces of gear. And at that point, you might go out adventuring again. You might do some quests and the quest cards. You might be able to improve your token bag and, and be able to have better chances of pulling out green tokens, blue tokens, and get that better gear. And at this point, you're still not leveled up to Journeyman because while you have the two titles, you might not yet have upgraded to three of your upgraded green flame cards. So you gotta figure out, do you wanna do that, trying to, be, you know, trying to go through quests, or do you wanna maybe go for a third title by doing another module? Um, I think that there are three modules, the Stone of Life, and then two that came with the Journeyman modules box that are all one skull. So you have the capability of doing that. So once you've then earned three green cards, three upgraded novice cards in your deck, and you've got the two titles, then you're eligible to be Journeyman. And so you'll take the little character token that you have in your uh, character slot there, and you'll swap that out with the token of the subclass, the Journeyman subclass that you want to go with which will, as you can see on it, it will give you some better dice, naturally, your, your dice pool. And now every time you see the game reward you with being able to manipulate your deck, you can choose from one of your 10 blue flame cards for that subclass and swap it out with a different card from your deck. So in total, you can end up having all five of your green cards and all 10 of your journeyman cards in your deck. So you will have replaced up or over half of the original cards that you have. So you will slowly become more and more powerful. You'll eventually get better gear and better gear. And it'll be really interesting to see how far we can push, push our abilities, push our heroes through some of the more difficult content. So that in a nutshell is leveling and progression in myth. So hopefully that makes some sense out of it. 
Now, if you have any questions at all, I'm very happy to try to answer them. Please go ahead and leave a comment and I'll, I'll definitely see it and get to it. If I don't know the answer, I have a couple people that I can reach out to to try and get some, some more clarification on some things. So I'll definitely try to do that for you because again, this is easily one of my favorite games. I love it. I really wish more people got into it and understand that there's a major barrier there in understanding how this game works and how, how it all flows. Um, so hopefully this was helpful. If there are other topics that you'd like to see covered, let me know. Uh, again, I've, I've probably got a list of maybe six to eight right now that I'm interested in potentially covering. So we'll, we'll see. Depends on, uh, on how, what, on what people are saying, what people need clarification on. So anyway, Pratsky here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.